Hello and welcome to today's concert. And today we're in a very special place. St. Bartholomew's Church in Armley, Leeds. That's one of the great historic organs in this country. Tom, my brother, is here filming and recording. And you may know this instrument because it exists as a, a sample that people can play on electronic organs. So it's quite a famous sound. But we wanted to bring you the real thing because that wouldn't exist without these actual pipes and this actual instrument. And of course, what an amazing instrument. And would you actually believe it was actually built for a house originally in the 1860s, early 1870s? Um, Thomas Stuart Kennedy was an engineer and businessman in Leeds and we're talking about the time when people were richer than they're ever going to be ever again and when people got slightly carried away in the Victorian times and didn't let their imagination get in the way of any sort of reality or anything like that. His wife was a uh, musical and played the piano and organ and he liked music so he decided he'd have an organ built for his house, Meanwood Towers, an amazing place built by Pugin. Um, he went to Germany and had the preeminent organ build of the day, Schulze, who'd become famous at the Great Exhibition in London, and asked him to build an organ for his house. It started off as a, a small two manual organ and of course it all got slightly carried away and ended up like this, a four manual organ with 50 plus stops. He built a music room, of course, onto his house, which seated 800 people. Within the space of a couple of years, though, his wife was too ill to play and the room got damp, so he decided to sell it. It was sold to three sisters, three spinster sisters from Harrogate who had their own means and uh, supported local things in Harrogate and the church at St. Peter's, which they bought the organ and donated it as a loan to St. Peter's Church in Harrogate. Now, they had a slight falling out with the vicar, which meant that he gave them an ultimatum. Either they take the organ with them or they give it outright to the church. They decided to take it with them and offered it for sale. At this time, this church had just opened in Armley in 1877. A huge, huge building, but had no organ. We looked at the space and they decided that it would go in here very nicely. They designed a new case to go with it and um, it was installed here and opened in about 1879-1880. An incredible organ. I can't imagine the room it was in originally. We have no pictures of that at all. But the person who donated this, William Henry Ayres, um, he just paid for it outright as a celebration of his own wedding which was taking place in 1880. He unfortunately never got to hear the organ because he died on his honeymoon wedding tour which is a very unfortunate but he's buried in the churchyard here and this is his legacy an amazing amazing organ so today we're going to bring you some of the wonderful wonderful music that this organ will play and i thought an organ like this people are not quite sure what it's meant to be used for sometimes it's very germanic has a slight english feel because people like bins and lewis and people who followed on took this as inspiration and there's some amazing amazing sounds on it you have sort of these big flutes on every manual. There's a, a choir manual which has smaller things, clarinet and flutes as well. 
Well, things like carnets, which are very odd in this country. There's a, there's a 16 foot. It also has an echo organ at the top, which is buried right in the organ. It's so quiet. Which has strings. And it goes up to quite big sort of... And of course, on the great, we have big trumpets. Including a 16-foot tuba, as it's called. And that's just the manual stops. The front pipes do play. The pedal's massive, as you expect, and the swell is pretty standard for what you'd expect. And uh, I want to play a piece of Bach now, the Prelude and Fugue in E minor, BWV 533. And there's a reason for playing this, because here at Armley, we've been allowed to come in today by Graham Barber, who's the organist here, and he's a brilliant, brilliant musician, a very clever guy, and really knows his stuff, and he's a real expert, especially in Germanic music. Um, and I've heard him play all my life, and he's absolutely brilliant. But I can remember the first time I ever met Graham. It was the 22nd of February in 1993 at two o'clock and uh, you might think that's a bit strange I've not got an amazing memory like that I just know that because that was my first ever organ competition it was the Mrs Sunderland organ competition it was a, a music festival in Huddersfield and Graham was the adjudicator for it and I met him and I played this back piece I'm going to play for you now and I always remember this because um, People over the years say, who taught you, what did they teach you, and what did you learn? And I always remember Graham saying at the beginning of this piece, it, it starts with this sort of figuration. Of course, being a young 14, I played this, and uh, very in time. Uh, I won the class, and that was great, and I went on to win uh, the whole thing. But he said to me, just give it a big space, use the building, give it this sort of sense of fantasy and shape and go with the harmony. So hopefully I've improved over the years and Graham will approve of this now. But as I said to you, I went on to win the rest of the competition and I received a medal, which I have here with me now. There we go, there's the front. And it's for the instrumentalist challenge of all the instrumentalists in the competition. Um, so hopefully my playing has improved since then. I hope you enjoy this. This is going to be Bach's Prelude and Fugue in E. Minor.
brilliant music and a great way of showing some of the very straight sounds of this organ. It's very powerful and very pure. Uh, and when it's first built, it's a different sound to English ears. It was rebuilt in 1905 by James Jepson Binns, who added this new console and a pneumatic action and pistons as well. But he kept the sound of it. He was a real disciple of Schulze. And if you've seen other places like uh, Rochdale Town Hall or the Albert Hall in Nottingham, this is very much the same sort of Binns design of console. Now, Binns, of course, influenced people like Le Maire with his uh, thumb pistons and being able to change stops to do transcriptions. So I'm going to play a transcription of some Wagner now. Uh, the Liebestod from Tristan and Isolde, that great tragic opera by Wagner. And of course, this opera comes from about the time when this organ was originally built. When the opera was being premiered, this organ would have been built in the workshops in Germany before being brought over here to Leeds. Very beautiful music, and this show the very, very beautiful sounds are using all four manuals. Le Maire was a great concert of organist, of course. He used to play these transcriptions at church in St. Margaret's, Westminster, where he was organist at the time. And there's lots of thumbing down where you play on one manual with your thumb and the fingers on another. But in this one, he takes it to extremes. It's both hands thumbing to four manuals, three manuals at once, four manuals at once sometimes. Um, and there's hundreds and hundreds of notes. Uh, it's really awkward but it sounds so beautiful it has this real yearning with it because in the opera this is the final scene as Tristan lays dead in Isolde's arms and she sings of how she wishes to join him and she then does at the end of the opera and the whole opera then resolves into this beautiful chord right at the end of the whole opera. I hope you enjoy this it shows the wonderful sounds of this instrument this is the Liebestod, the love death from Tristan and Isolde.
not only does this organ have great powerful sounds, it also has some very, very delicate and beautiful sounds. When it was first installed here, the organist was a chap called Thomas Carthra. Uh, he was organist here from 1878 till about 1921, so a good 40 odd years of his life, and he regarded this organ as his own personal property, and I think he's classed as a real, real character and a real sort of quite a brusque Yorkshireman who said everything as it was to people, but he used to let people play the organ and then show it off and was really, really proud of this instrument. But uh, a few interesting tales about him. Uh, um, when uh, the services were on at church in the even song, the sermon used to last some 45 minutes and you could just pop out of the back of the organ, out through the blower room door and pop down the road to the local pub, the malt shovel, where he would have a little bit of light refreshment before returning to finish playing. So he was a, a really interesting chap and it's amazing to think he sat there playing this instrument. And of course for such an amazing heroic instrument there's only really one piece I'm going to finish with today and that's the first movement of the Eroica Symphony by Beethoven. Um, written 1803 to 1804, it was originally meant to be dedicated to Napoleon Bonaparte. Of course, uh, Beethoven thought Napoleon was a bit of a hero at the time when he thought he was going to be a real democrat uh, for the people, but when he declared himself emperor, Beethoven famously tore up the title page of the manuscript and scratched out his name from another one. Um, so, but it kept the name Eroica, um, but it is a heroic piece of music. People were taken aback at the first performance because it was on such a large scale. And it's thought this piece is really sort of the crossover between classical and into the romantic sort of symphony, really. Um, amazing harmonic progressions, great sort of sudden changes in dynamic and sound, and some really strange harmonic moments. This is a new organ transcription I've done. You'll see I'm still playing off the manuscripts. It's so fresh, I wrote it out only the other day. Um, but I thought on this instrument with this sound, it's a great way of seeing what this instrument can do. It's pneumatic action, air goes to the notes and uh, goes to the pipes. So you've not got anything mechanical, but air in tubes. And it's so sort of quick, it really, really works well. It was a great invention. And so we're gonna push it to its limit now. I hope you enjoyed the concert today. Thank you to everyone here at Armley for allowing us to come in. Tom, my brother, for filming and recording and showing you this amazing building. And I hope you enjoyed hearing this wonderful, wonderful instrument. If you ever get a chance to come to a concert here, do, because in the building it sounds absolutely incredible. I've loved coming here, so I hope you have too. And this is going to be the first movement of Beethoven's Eroica Symphony. <laughs>